name is Justin Duck. Um, uh, me and my wife are uh, returning Newfoundlanders. Um, we were actually away in Saskatchewan for 13 years. And we've got a seven-year-old disabled child. And what we found since we've returned to Newfoundland is the um, lack of consistency from province to province in what's available for services for our daughter. Um, we, we found that the Janeway Hospital is fantastic, but once you leave the doors of the Janeway Hospital, um, services are uh, vastly lacking. Um, if, if, if you go for funding, it's all income based. So for a uh, one income family like, like ours, uh, wife has to stay home and look after our disabled child with uh, multiple needs. Uh, you know, uh, I'm a middle income wage earner and I know by listening to Open Line and, and the things that I'm going through and, and, and getting right now is man, you don't qualify for services. You know, incontinent supplies, wheelchairs for, for God's sake, you know, that's a human right. Transportation for, for a child. You know, I, I hear uh, the NDP's platform, liberal and uh, conservative platforms, you know, they, they talk about the seniors. You know, support for seniors, housing for seniors, you know, low income families, seniors. Um, but on the other scale is, the children with disabilities. They're getting left behind, and the families are gonna deal with them. You know, we could be deadbeat parents and leave the kid up for the state. The state would have to look after the kid, and and uh, then you'd have to pay somebody to look after them anyway. So, the question is, um, what mandate are you gonna bring in to look after kids with disabilities? You shouldn't have to look at the family's income for uh, the supports that they need, but the child's individual disability. Right. Thank you. Good so this time our order is Clyde Jackman, Earl McCurdy, and then Paul Ray, Pauline. Um, you know, a family with a, a child with a disability certainly faces additional challenges, there's, there's no doubt about it. We, we recognize it, and I guess in all of our families, uh, maybe not all of our families, but in, in some of our families, we have siblings, sister or brother, that has a child with a disability, and we know the challenges that they face. Uh, all I can say to you uh, first is, you know, we have to work with the community. If I, if I look at schools, for example, the issues that people face around autism, uh, disabilities within the schools and you channel dollars to the schools to offer what you hope to be the best inclusion model that you possibly can. Uh, should there be a cutoff? I, I, I can't, you know, I'd rather that we didn't. It would be great if we could provide everything to everyone. I know that's not possible. All I can say to you is that, you know, we have to do the utmost that we can recognize the challenge, recognizing the challenge that you face. And if we've got programs that are in place right now, if they need to be reviewed, if we go forward on a budgetary process whereby you know we need to put, put forward other additional supports, that's that's the way, the way that we have. But I mean, uh, you know, I understand the situation that you're in on a middle income. Yeah, definitely. <coughs> Definitely, sometimes you're, you're hit harder, uh, and uh, you know, I guess what we'll have to do is t to continue to review the programs and to offer the best that we possibly can. Thank you. Oh my God. Yeah, thank you. The, um, yeah, I think the, uh, the discrepancies between provinces are certainly, you know, uh, worrisome, I guess, or they're, 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 you know, it should be of concern because uh, you know, we're all, all Canadian citizens, even though this is a matter of provincial jurisdiction. I believe that par parcel of addressing that would be to, to get an inventory. We don't already have it of what the various practices are in different, in different provinces with a view to trying to provide for our citizens the same kind of services as elsewhere. 
and to have a timetable for getting there. I mean, I, you know, certainly, I, I'm, I'm, I understand the Saskatchewan is a province that, uh, that uh, is perhaps the best or certainly well up there in terms of the supports and so on that are available. Uh, I could uh, make a political comment and observe that for many years there was an NDP government there, and perhaps that explains why that's the case, because I think they, they have the share of the values that I outlined earlier. And also, and, and as to the many, we are, our, uh, and the timing of this meeting is good because our platform for the upcoming election is still being developed, it's not finalized, and any time we come to a forum like this, you know, it's certainly we're listening as well as talking and, and, and trying to, uh, and, that, and that contributes to the development of, of what, we'll, uh, what we'll put out in our platform. Thank you. Pauline? Yeah, well, uh, I'm certainly not in a position to, um, to you know, offer up another uh, uh, plank of the, uh, the uh, red book. I did one tonight, and that's, that was the only one I was going to do. But I would say, uh, you know, I would say, as, uh, as uh, Clyde and, and, and Earl have, I guess, sort of indicated that, or Earl has indicated at least, uh, you know, that we all live in the one country, and uh, healthcare services and, and services, uh, you know, like that, uh, should be consistent across provinces. Uh, certainly, we know that the uh, federal government does play a role when it comes to healthcare transfers. I, I don't believe Mr. Harper has been too kind uh, uh, when it came to, to that. I think there was some uh, uh, cuts and reductions and so on. So, uh, perhaps you know, as we look at uh, a number of services, whether it be the service that you mentioned or others, uh, certainly I think there may be a role. Uh, for the premiers to uh, have that discussion with the new prime minister, if there isn't a bit, if there isn't enough money available in the pot uh, to, uh, to to get some more money transferred down for those things, uh, you know, one of the things I've observed is that it seems like the the middle income earner, uh, and I've come across so many people uh, in that boat. Quite frankly, is that you know you do, you don't there's a lot of people out there that aren't rich, so they're not independently wealthy. Um, and they make enough money to pay taxes on everything, but they never make enough money to qualify for any programs. And in some cases, you end up in a situation where somebody uh, could argue they would actually be better off if they were a lower income, because if they, you know, depending on where you're to on that uh, particular line, if you're just above a particular line, you actually find yourself worse off than uh, a person who's making less money. So, you know, again, I think it ties into, uh, you know, having to look at some of these programs and look at it from a more, uh, not, not taking a, co a cookie cutter approach, but sort of looking at the overall situation of the individual and the family and to, and to apply some level of fairness. So, you know, these are things, you know, as the Minister said, that would have to be uh, reviewed and hopefully improved upon. Thank you. So we have 15 minutes until 9.